Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I am a tutor with Czech Tutors and today we will be covering torsion. So torsion is just the twisting of an object due to an applied torque. So as you can see here we have a long straight bar with two torques applied to it in opposite directions. So we have a long bar and two torques in applying in opposite directions which is creating that twist. As you can see here we have the cross section of this bar which is a circular cross section if uh, you're looking at the bar in the direction of this arrow you'll see a circle like this and this has a radius of r and it also has something here theta which is known as the angle of twist so if you essentially look at point one here if you twist this bar in a counterclockwise direction this point one will eventually move over and the distance that that moves will be given by an angle theta which is called the angle of twist. So the main equations that kind of govern torsion are, can be seen here. We have shear stress divided by radius so tau over r equals the torque over polar moment of inertia so T over J. Polar moment of inertia is just dependent on the cross section of the bar and the geometry of it so it's just given by a formula that you can look up and I'll show you the formula for a circular cross section in the example that we do. And that all equals the shear modulus times the angle of twist divided by the length, so g theta over l. Shear modulus is just a property of the material, so we can, um, it really just depends on what the, the material it is and how strong it is, and we'll see in the example. Here we have a long straight bar attached to a wall, it's fixed to a wall with an applied torque of 10 newton meters and it has a length of 1 meter. We are given the cross section which shows that um, the radius is 10 centimeters and we are also shown that um, the shear modulus is 80 gigapascals and we are to find the polar moment of inertia which is J and the angle of twist. So as you can see here down here we have J, the equation for J and this is only applicable this equation right here is only applicable to circular cross sections, which is what we have here. If you have a square cross section, your your polar moment of inertia equation is a little different. You can again, you can just look it up online, and that shouldn't be a problem. So for a circular cross section, we have the polar moment of inertia is equal to pi times times the diameter of the cross section to the fourth power divided by 32. So since our radius is 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters, I like to use SI units. Just multiply that by 2 and you have the diameter. So we have pi times 0.2 meters to the fourth power divided by 32. And that equals 1.57 times 10 to the negative fourth. And um, the units would be meters to the fourth. So that is your polar moment of inertia. Now to find the angle of twist we can just simply use this equation shown in the beginning so torque over j torque over polar moment of inertia which we solve for we have both of these values so we have those values let's check it off is equal to shear modulus we have that times angle of twist which we're looking for divided by length which we have so here we can just simply plug it into this equation if we rearrange this equation here we have theta is equal to torque times length over the shear modulus times the polar moment of inertia and that will equal let's see our torque of 10 newton meters times our length of 1 meter divided by our 80 gigapascals times our polar moment of inertia, which was 1.57 times 10 to the negative fourth. There we go. So if we just calculate that out, which I already have done, we get a theta of 7.96. times 10 to the 
negative seventh power and that is in degrees so that is a really small angle of twist but considering we were using 80, 80 degrees, 80 gigapascals as our shear modulus, which is about the shear modulus for steel, it's expected that we get a small angle of twist. So that here is theta. And so we have solved for both both things that we were looking for. We found J, we found angle of twist. And that's it. It's really simple. All you have to do is really just use your equations here and just solve for the variables that you don't know and then you'll be able to find the rest. So I hope that was clear. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to message me. Thank you.